So I had a lot of people in my last video talk about the fact that they think AI is going to take over all data analyst jobs. And I mean a lot of people. Um, the video did pretty well, so there was a lot of people, a lot of detractors in the comments, I'll call them. Not my normal audience. They might be interested in a data analyst job. Maybe they're not. Maybe they just want to talk crap on data analyst jobs and say that they're going to get taken by AI. I don't know what the case was, but there's a lot of people who watch the video who are either worried or think that AI is going to take over data analyst jobs. So that's exactly what I want to talk about in today's video. Now, look, I even took some notes for this one because um, if this is your first time watching me, I am a data analyst. So I took some notes from like my job, just a few things. Um, first of all, do I think that AI is going to take over data analyst jobs? And I promise I'll explain myself. Yes and no. Um, <laughs> probably the answer you were expecting. I don't think data analyst is going to be something that just we pass off to the past. I also don't think it's going to look the same in the future. So let's talk about it. Now, personally, full disclosure, I am a data analyst. I work at a fairly large company and we have a team that works on AI related things within our company. Um, so they're building like a clone of ChatGPT, basically a wrapper that just protects our company, our data, make sure it doesn't send it off to anybody else, make sure that, you know, there's nothing, no concerns with like any legal stuff because we are an insurance industry. We have to make sure that we're conforming to all the legal standards for that kind of stuff. Um, a bunch of stuff that, you know, a lot of people don't understand. I don't even fully understand. And I work at the company. Uh, however, this team has been like all their age for the past year and a half. Uh, and rightfully so. AI has gotten insanely powerful. There's a lot of different things that we can do with AI now um, that you can do on your own. You can use ChatGPT. You can use Perplexity. You can use... Uh, Bard or whatever it's called now, Vertex AI. Um, you can use Meta AI. There's Rock on X or Twitter. There's all these different tools available to us, and all people hear about is how AI is going to take all these jobs. It's going to ruin creative jobs. It's going to ruin analyst jobs. It's going to ruin software engineering jobs. And I just simply don't think that's the case, at least not the way that people think. Um, and I almost guarantee. I almost 100% guarantee that everybody that commented on that last video saying that AI was going to take over data analyst jobs is not a data analyst themselves. They don't know what goes into being a data analyst, so they don't really have the full picture on what could be taken over by AI in a data analyst role. So let's talk about that. First of all, there's some repetitive tasks that data analysts do on a daily basis that are absolutely going to change because of AI. Things like standard SQL pools. Things like producing reports, producing some visualizations, maybe even to the level where it can produce an entire dashboard for you. I don't know. Uh, but I think there's no better way to explain it than through this video from Sundas Khalid. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. She did a very good video about a year ago on the topic. So let's watch that real quick. As data analyst, we have Jack and we have Jessica. Okay, I came up with those names. <laughs> So Jack and Jessica, they sound like brother and sister. <laughs> Sorry, getting off topic. So Jack and Jessica. So Jack works as a data analyst. Jessica works as a data analyst. Now, what is different about their roles? Jack's primary job is to prepare daily sales report and send it to the VP. He basically pulls that he basically pulls the data using SQL query, puts the data in Excel create some pivot tables on top of it, create some nice plots and tables, and then sends that email to the VP. Jessica also works as a data analyst. Her primary work includes reporting, but as well as doing some critical thinking to improve the product using data. Her day-to-day -day work is not as straightforward. She has to do a lot of critical thinking and analytical thinking to come up with new creative ideas to solve the problems or find existing problems in the product that customers are facing. So. We have Jack and we have Jessica. So in these two hypothetical cases, Jack's role includes a lot of repetitive work. Basically his work pretty much every day he does the same thing. With Jessica, her work involves a lot of thinking, a lot of um, analytical skills. So in this case, whose job is going to be automated in five years, two years or whatever years, that is going to be Jack because Jack's job is pretty repetitive, there's a process around it, and it can be easily automated using AI tools. Whereas Jessica, Jessica uses a lot of critical thinking, a lot of analytical thinking. Her role is also a data analyst, but and she does do some repetitive work. And there will be some element of her job that will be automated, but the core of her job will not be automated. Before we So I think that really encapsulates the idea that I'm trying to convey. It's that there's going to be some repetitive work for data analysts that gets 
replaced by AI. We saw it in the last thing, putting together data in a spreadsheet, pulling standard queries, sending off emails, that kind of stuff. Of course, it's going to be automated. That's just the natural progression of AI. However, I do not think at least any time in the near future that you would even have to consider it being an issue that AI is going to replace data analysts completely. There's always going to be need for people to interpret results. There's always going to be need for people to creatively think about a problem in a way that AI just is not going to have the context to do. I, I simply feasibly, I feasibly do not understand a way that the AI can just completely replace the entire process in our insurance company, for example, of going from the insurance policy to specific health conditions and understanding specific populations. Also, deriving results on those populations, actionably creating a plan for those populations, and then implementing more policies to positively impact those populations. Because that's really what we do. That's kind of the feedback cycle we work through. And I just don't feasibly understand a way that AI can do that. Now, sure, somebody's going to say, hey, look at this use case of AI where it did exactly that. That's great in a use case example. But when you actually try to put that into practice with the amount of data that a company like I work for has, it's just impossible. Now, with this being said, the people at the company that I work for that work on the AI team, they're producing amazing tools. Um, I already talked about the chat GPT piece, but they're also producing tools that search the policies themselves. What does this do for data analysts? It speeds up our process so we don't have to look through hundreds of pages of documents to try to understand a policy. We can just ask the chat GPT or whatever vertex AI, whatever it's built on wrapper over the policy. We're also working on building out agents who help us do things, not only um, for our own workflows, but for users of our dashboards workflows. We want to build agents that help users use dashboards. What does this do? It frees up time for data analysts to do more data analyst work. It frees us up to provide more insights, to provide more results, um, to interpret data, to gather data. And sure, some of that's going to be replaced by AI, but there's just simply too much that is going on within the company for AI to just completely replicate what a data analyst does and expand on that work. Somebody has to make sure that these <laughs> AI agents and tools are understanding the data correctly. And the only way to do that is to have somebody experienced in the insurance industry who understands the world that the insurance industry exists in and is able to keep AI on the guide rails and use AI as a tool to help them perform their job. So what does this mean for you? If you're looking to get a data analyst job, don't be scared of AI. Sure, it's gonna change the way people work. Uh, and there's gonna be people who don't decide to use or learn about all the different tools and capabilities that AI has. I personally think those people are going to be most likely to lose their jobs. The second group of people is going to take AI, utilize the tools available to them, and hopefully, um, I pray for all of you who get a data analyst job that you work at a company like I work at, where we're not only not scared of AI, we're embracing it and building technologies on top of it and utilizing it to its fullest capability that we have available to us, which is exactly what we're doing. Those are the companies and the people that are going to prosper in the age of AI. The people who are going to get set back and possibly lose their jobs and um, not have much of a future in terms of data analysis is the people who just refuse to use AI, one, or they refuse to expand their skill set past what AI is able to do. So in that example we watched um, on that video, that's Jack. He pulls some basic reports and puts together basic stuff. You have to expand your tool set past that. And the best way to do that is to get some experience in a specific industry so that you cannot feasibly be getting rid of by that company because you just know too much about the product, you know too much about the industry, you know too much about the policies and the legal um, impacts of different things and is able to provide context past just here's the data, make a decision. Um, because that's what a good data analyst does. They not only pull the data and format results, but they're able to interpret and predict things as well. So hopefully that deters you from being afraid of AI, afraid of AI taking data analyst jobs. And really the same rules apply to other industries as well, not just data analysis. This is true for software engineers. This is true for data analysts. We're just not at the point where we have to worry about AI completely taking over an industry. If anything, the industry that should have already been taken over 
would be something like customer service. And we see that 99.9% of businesses that use customer service representatives, they're still humans. Sure, you have the automated systems that route calls to the areas they need to go to. And yeah, that makes sense. Um, but I don't think we're ever going to get to a point, at least not in the near future, that we would even have to consider uh, debating on whether or not AI is going to take that industry over or take those job market over. We're just not close. It doesn't happen. We haven't seen it. Um, and sure, you can argue with me in the comments and say that AI is more powerful than I think. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's more powerful than anybody thinks. Um, but even so, provide some evidence that AI is going to take over data analyst jobs and take over other jobs. And not just a specific use case from one company. I want to see the proof. I want to see an industry where AI is absolutely taking jobs. Show me that and maybe I'll change my mind. But until then, hopefully this deters you from being worried. I'm not worried. I'm a data analyst. Sure, call me naive. Whatever you want to do. But that's my thoughts. And um, hopefully this helps you out. But hey, on a completely separate note, check this video out next. Because I think it's going to help you in finding your data analyst job and it'll help you improve your ability to get that job. So good luck, thank you, and I'll see you over there.